Greetings and welcome to In-Depth on BK Roster. Music educator Dr. Ray Holman is considered a legend in the Pan fraternity for good reason. Pantopia is a steel band musical inspired by the music of Dr. Holman, scheduled for performance in April. Director, playwright, lecturer, co-founder, or let's just say founder of the Canberra Productions, Roel Gibbons, he wrote the script and is producing the play. He joins us now to speak about it. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Diki. But the thing is, there's mm -hmm. so many things that are good ideas. You mm. know, be a good idea if somebody. Do, you know, be a good idea. So, mm. what is the impetus that took this good idea mm. into being something that was tangible and we we can be experiencing in April? You know, I was kind of half hoping that somebody else might have the good idea with this one. But um, in fact, I wanted to work with Ray for some time since I was at university. You know, at um, Creative Arts. Um, that didn't happen for one reason or another. But um, when he got the honorary doctorate, I felt it was important that we understand that the doctorate satisfies one aspect of the work. But, you know, getting the people, the population generally, to appreciate the music outside of a panorama context, I think was important. And it's not just panorama music. He has a very wide repertoire. So the idea was really getting his music out, you know? And I thought that, I mean, it was so obvious to me. It was obvious because uh, the, 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 the importance of Ray in the first place and the fact that the music is so dramatic, you know? Um, I, I really felt in undertaking this that it should be something that a national institution of the arts should do. So I waited a little, <laughs> right? And when I saw that there was nothing happening, I just had to do it. So I went to the NSSO, actually. One of my graduates, Akko Leith, was the director there at that time. And um, I approached him about it, about their being part of it. You know, but I wrote it, and, and um, I always felt that, as I say, it should be, given the nature of his work and the stature of the man, that it really should be a national enterprise or undertaking. And when we talk about and you can separate the work from the man, or you can keep them together, but what are some of those touchstones along the path that just kind of consolidated yeah. your view that no man, this is something yeah, that needs well, to be done? Yeah, yeah, well, in the first place, I mean, what he's done, and the first thing, he's, um, he's the man who broke the tradition of Calypso being the, the main fair, the only fair, really, for Panorama, and in 1972, he was the man who introduced his own music, his own composition, you know, um, Pan on the Move. Um, so that was historic, right? A, num a number of other bands, of course, followed since that time. So that was the first thing that Ray did. Um, and then, of course, the drama that surrounded that song, you know, because his band was attacked because of it, right? So there was, there was drama involved in it. Um, and then he responded with Pan on the Run. So there, I mean, immediately, you have a story coming out there, right? A story of conflict, a drama. And then, of course, he went on to do other things. When you look at his music, you know, you see the women always talk about his music because there's so much romance in it. You know, there's a man who could take a, a song like Bull Pistol, um, yeah, and, 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 um, and turn it into a romantic song. I mean, when people hear something like Penny Lane, for instance, you know, you know, you know, they, 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 it's very visceral in that sense. It touches you right there. So he's a, he's a powerful composer. And, and it's something and, that... And with a wide range of music. You know? And that range is important as mm -hmm. well, but it just kind of speaks to the power of the creativity and the power of the man, as you say, to take ugly and turn it into beauty. And articulate well, it in that way, yeah, in terms of like, because yes, because mm. conflict, it, yes, mm. it could make for good mm. theatre mm. and whatever. But when you're feeling that conflict and that, and that violence upon your body, not everyone would say, "Okay, well, I win." And yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know, it takes a certain kind of courage and commitment for that. Um, and of course, he was doing it before 1972. You know, he was experimenting. You know, um, when you when you go back to his story, you see he was trying things with his, his, the first band that he was with, which is Invaders. 
you know. He was experimenting all the time and writing. He wrote his own, his first composition at 17, I think it was, you know, Ray's Saga. So we used that in the play as well. Um, he had no lyrics for it, but he, the music is strong, although he was a youth at the time. Uh, so we, you know, we developed every lyrics for it. And even you, you spoke of courage as well, because it's one thing to say, okay, well, other bands followed his lead and started to use their own compositions, mm -hmm. but to be the trendsetter meant that he would have faced the wrath of two of lot. the biggest and baddest <laughs> in the industry at that point, in terms of Lord Kitchen and the Mighty well, Sparrow. It, that, the Calypsonians on one side, right? Because you're taking away revenue from them, and it's the bands on the other side. Right, because you're entering Panorama with your own music, you know, and not only with your own music, but it's something good. And I'm gonna say, but why would that, why it's would the band have good. a problem with it? <laughs> well, I mean, they weren't doing that, and they were, um, in fact, they were considering whether it's Calypso in the first place. But of course, it was. You know, they felt that the bands, you, you, and you tend to find that in Panorama, people tend to be very conventional, and if you feel that anyone is breaking the rules and getting what you might cons consider an advantage. Right? Doing something different in any way. There's a problem there. But, you know, as I say, he, he faced the wrath of both, both the Calypsonians and the man. But looking at advantage, we have about two minutes, so we don't have advantage this side of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But do you think that you had an advantage or have an advantage sitting with this idea for so long before writing it, kind of hoping that somebody else did it as well? Well, no, I mean, when I first thought about it, I didn't, I didn't write the thing, you know, I just felt that we had to do something with Ray. Right? Because here's a man who is a prolific composer. That, is, that means that he's an original creator of music. Right? And he's just there. This was long before UB recognized him and so on. He was just there. But he had this, 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 this set of work. But I hadn't really gone into the work. You know? It's only with the, with, this, with the honorary degree that I, 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 I talked with him before and told him what I wanted to do, that I wanted to work with him. But I only broached the, this particular play that I wanted to write with him at that time. Um, and, you know, we just worked together on it. He supplied the music. I did the script, uh, the lyrics for some of the songs, and, of course, to make sure that he was satisfied with it. You know, we had to collaborate on that. So that was the process. All right, well, this process here requires that we take a, a short break now. So we do that, and we come back with more. We're speaking about Roald Gibbons, about Pantopia. So we're going to get into, I don't want to say the meat of the matter, but we're going to focus a little more on the logistics, where people can access tickets, how it is. I see I see an idea where people say you had to walk with your sticks and all yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you tell us about that too, but stay with us. we come back with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with founder of Campbellay Productions, Roald Gibbons, about a Pantopia, a um, steel band musical inspired by the work of Dr. Ray Hallman. And looking at the fact that you reached out to a co-lead then director of NSSO, mm. uh, who are some of the other players, pun intended, involved? Right, 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 right. Well, our musical director, apart from Aqua, Aqua is our musical director of the, for the pan. We also have Marva Newton. Right, who's our? She's our regular musical director, and she did directs the voice and the guitar and so on. She plays an excellent guitarist. Uh, most of the we have Sintaiki Bishop, who has played with us before. She's a member of the National um, Theatre Company. Most of the other players are um, first time. They're expert steel banners, steel band players, but they're first time actors, and because this play requires really that people play. And that's why, we, of course, we cast among the, the, the pan players first. But you also have to act and sing. So, you know, and move, of course, dance sometimes. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, we need that kind of versatility. What know? was that process like in terms of, because just before, before, before we took the break, you spoke about people sometimes being very conventional and saying, okay, well, if you're departing from your, your lane, as it were, you're not supposed to be doing that. But um, what was that process taking these individuals who, okay, well, I could play pan mm. as a pan, mm. but carrying them through the well, other uh, aspects of the discipline? We have an excellent director in Louis McWilliams, right, who is our stage director. Um, and he's extremely good at that. 
you know, making people feel comfortable with what it is they're doing, bringing out the best in them, you know. And of course, Louis is a man, he's trained uh, at Creative Arts, and he's worked in Best Village as well. He's, um, Mousik, not Mousik, what is it called? Who call um, wrong? <laughs> no, 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 no. But anyway, he's, a, he's an experienced Best Village man. So he's accustomed to working in a number of different arts, okay. you know, in music, in performance, and so on. So it, he, he's, he's handled it very well. Um, we have uh, people like Darren, Darren Niles, um, who, who plays a, a, you know, one of the lead parts in it. He's a, a, a very good pianist. In fact, they're all good pianists. You know? um, some of them young, um, some of them more experienced, but all of them really, you know, as I say, meeting this challenge of, of being actors and performers and so on while you're playing as well. So they're doing pretty well at it. That's important because sometimes mm -hmm. we're in situations where we just kind of heavily coerced, I won't mm -hmm. say forced, heavily mm -hmm. coerced into being our better selves. So we recently had a conversation with Penelope Spencer mm -hmm. and she said she went to something and I think it was as a dancer, mm -hmm. but there was this aspect of theatre and singing involved. Mm -hmm. So now we know how more now for being a thespian than for being a dancer. Yeah, 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 so being yeah. able to kind of bring these things out from within and saying, hey, I never really thought about this, but yeah. this being this opportunity to start themselves on this path, I think is something that's also important. Yeah, that's one of the things. And that's one thing about a process like this, where you discover yourself as you go along, what you can do. You know, there's so much of, 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 of that happens in theater. You know. But in terms of theater, dates, locations, we're going to get back to the pan sticks, but when, when, <laughs> when, when will it be mounted? When can people go? As early as next week. We start on the 5th of April. Uh, we run that weekend, 5th, 6th, and 7th. And then we're back at phase two for the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Just two weekends at phase two. Okay, so Woodbrook. both times at phase two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both times at phase two. Um, even, even like that, what is that like in terms of the history of it and the context, seeing that uh, Dr. Sharp is... Oh, a protege of, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> of, of, um, of Ray. Yeah, well, it, it, it all came together, you know, to make sense. I was looking for a place because one of the challenges that we have in Canberra is finding the right kind of space for the kind of productions that we do. You know, the last time we performed publicly, we were at uh, Playboy's, Woodbrook Playboy's Panyard. Newtown Playboy Spaniard. Um, that's when we did the Calypso play, I Want to Fall. So we're always looking for the right kind of space, you know? And this play in particular requires, uh, it cannot work in a proscenium theater. You know, it requires a kind of intimacy, a kind of contact with the audience. It's a risky play in some respects because the audience is called on to participate in ways that they have not done in Canbury productions before. They are actually cast in this particular play, the audience that is. Okay. Um, so they will, they will need to understand that, <laughs> right? And then we have the invitation, because the play is a steel band play, and it covers so much of, of not only Ray's um, story or Ray's music, but also steel band history, that I think it's an important play for pan men, for pan people to experience, you know? So we invite them to walk with the sticks because again, they're involved, they, are, they participate in the, in the action. And I think the point that you're making in terms of the proscenium, theater of proscenium space, might not be a different, might, might, might not be that ideal fit, because sometimes you go into a space and just the history of the space lends to a certain sort of behavior, the certain way to be a little more stush in this area. Well, or, yeah, and the, the so problem as, as opposed to not being able to right. engage and participate fully that's the right. way you're cast. Yeah, it's, it's a different kind of theater. You know, the proscenium requires distance. It requires you to be, you know, you have what they call the, the fourth wall, the invisible fourth walls, and you are outside, you're an outsider looking in to this action. That is not the kind of theater that we have in the Caribbean. People always want to be involved. You know, people go to cinema and they shout and they, they feel they want to take part in the action. That's what we do as Trinidadians. You go to the tent and you're heckling and, and whatnot, right? So we are, we are participatory kind of people. We don't like to be excluded. So we, we create a theater 
that's based on, the, on, on that principle. So we know it's the 5th, 6th, 7th, mm -hmm. and the 12th, 13th, 14th. Uh, how do people get contact Cambolé for tickets and just to get information generally? Well, yeah, my number, right, 3550966, right, is there. Um, they can always, they can call. We've advertised, uh, we have tickets at Metropolitan Bookshop, which is on Ayurveda Avenue. We have at uh, Cannes, Keith Cannes in San Fernando and they had Blue Edition in Tunapuna, yeah? So they have those three points of contact, but there's also e-tickets. You can go up online, e-tickets, and, and, and purchase, their, purchase their tickets there. It feels now as though there is a time where we are paying a little more attention mm. to the work that has been done. Sadly, I think it's because we realize that a lot of people have done the work. Mm -hmm. They're saying, hi, your Pancho. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is, is there something else that you have in mind already after Pantopia? Mm. Someone else, be it, be it a production itself or someone that you want to honor? Yeah, we're doing, a, we're doing something. Um, um, you know, this year is the 75th year of the publication of Capitalism and Slavery. And um, that's a, that book is particularly important. No, I don't have to tell anyone, of course, who's the writer of the book. Um, but the publication itself has a history. And of course, the book is important, Capitalism and Slavery, because this is the, this is the period of reparations. Right? And in a way, that book was seminal in terms of gathering the kind of information. It wasn't calling for reparations, but it gathered the kind of informa information on which the case for reparations could be built. Yeah, and this was published in 1944. So Eric Williams's Capitalism and Slavery is our next project. Okay? And with that, we say thank you very much. But before that, though, mm -hmm. 5th, 6th, 7th, 12th, 13th, 14th, <laughs> Pantopia, yep representing the work that has been put in by, and we say music educator, because sometimes it's, it's interesting what's in a name, because eh? mm -hmm. sometimes when you hear music educator, we don't necessarily associate it with Pan Man, even though I think that is rapidly changing now in the way that we have the junior Pan competitions, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's coming to prominence a little more, mm -hmm. but really uh, looking and validating and paying Honor to the work that has been done by Dr. Ray Holman, and we want to thank you for doing it as well, as well as the entire group that is a part of Cambuli Productions. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been speaking with Royal Gibbons, a founder of Cambuli Productions, looking at Pantopia. You heard the dates, you heard how you can get tickets, so please do so. On behalf of the entire TTT news team, I'm DK Rostar. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.